Creators, it's Inspiring Renazza here and welcome back to another fabulous interview for all of you. Um, I hope you are staying safe, um, staying aware and using your voices to speak up. Um, as you guys probably seen on my social media um, platforms or on my Instagram stories, today's guest is um, the one and only Sienna Arif Knights and she is a dancer and also an actress and she is best known as portraying the role as Sally Hope in Mallory Towers which is on CBBC so I am super excited to um, be interviewing her today um, not only about what she does um, and kind of about the performing arts industry but also a bit about obviously what's going on in the world because that is extremely important to still raise awareness around that um but i am very very excited hope you all are as well and do keep in mind that at the end of this interview um we will be doing a mini q a to answer a few of your questions so um start off now and leave some questions down below for sienna and then um at the end of the live or the end of the interview we will be answering some of the questions otherwise i am very very excited um to be interviewing sienna as well give us some love and let's just get straight into it i'm very very excited okay now we're gonna bring sienna on if we can well sienna you need to um request um to go live and then we can obviously get straight into it thank you all so much for logging in <laughs> okay there we go we're gonna get straight into it give us some love and hopefully um you all enjoy Hello! Hi! <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, so first of all, thank you so much for coming on to my Instagram to do this interview. So how yeah. has quarantine been going? What have you been, what have you been up to to keep busy? Um, quarantine's been okay. It's been a bit boring, but you know, I've been trying to keep myself active, I guess, like fitness, a lot of schoolwork. How's quarantine for you? Um, I've done so much schoolwork. Today's kind of been like a relaxing day for me, so I haven't yeah. really done that much. I think I went to Tesco. Well, I I, I went to Tesco's today um, to obviously get some groceries. Um, yeah. But otherwise, just kind of keeping a positive mindset, I think, is the most important thing right now. Yeah, yeah. So let's get straight into the first question for you. So the first question is, when did you realise you wanted to become an actress and a dancer? Well, I think... For me, when I was younger, I always liked to dance. And so my mum put me in a performing arts school and I was like, I really liked it, it was fun. And then I joined my dance my dance school, then I joined an agency. And when I was doing auditions, I started to have fun with it, you know, because I wasn't just doing auditions for acting, I was also doing it for dancing. And yeah, so then when I did it, I realized it was actually kind of fun. So then, yeah, it just made me want to be an actor. That is amazing because obviously not all people have the talent as you do to obviously dance and act at the same time. Yeah. So um, when you were younger, was it always something you thought you were going to do or was it something that just kind of came along because you started to go to the school? Well, I was always a crazy child. Like <laughs> when I was younger. I think everyone was. <laughs> when I was younger, I... um. I did like ballet. You know how everyone used to do ballet class when it was like seven? You know, and I then... used to do ballet on Wednesdays. <laughs> it is the craziest thing. Obviously, I don't do dance now, but I yeah. used to do ballet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone used to do ballet and I used to find it really fun. And then I used to like at home when my mom, when I used to go to family events, I used to just dance a lot and I used to sing. And I used to just be a dramatic child. So I was always kind of like an actor, if you would say. I'm an actress. Yeah. Yeah, always being a drama queen since yeah. a very young age. I can definitely um, agree with you on that one. And the next question I have for you is, what do you think has been the most important thing you've learned in your journey? I think the most important thing is patience is key. Patience always works. Because I say patience always works because um, when I was started to do auditions, I never got jobs straight away. I never got jobs straight away. And... Um, I realised that, like, I kept on saying to my mum, Mum, why am I getting these jobs? She said, you need patience, you know, you need to just wait. Like, I used to think, oh, they don't want me or something. And you just kind of have to wait it out, you know, just keep on trying. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learned. Yeah. 
I totally agree with you. I think in any industry people go into, yeah. it could obviously be like dancing, it could be singing, it could be acting, it could be motivational speaking, if you think about yeah. it. Because the opportunities won't always come to you straight away. So mm. I definitely can feel, can kind of feel where you're coming from as well. I think that's for everyone. But as long as you keep going and never give up, also yeah. patience does become a really good thing and it will yeah. help you become stronger um, as you go through your journey. So yeah. the next question I have for you is what was your favourite thing about filming on Mallory Towers and um, portraying the role of Sally Hope? Okay, so I think my favourite thing first of all was meeting the cast in general because like everyone in my life has been kind of familiar, like I've known you from somewhere, from somewhere, but meeting like nine new girls that I've never met before was crazy. Like it was really scary as well because every single one of them had different types of personality to adapt to. And I think being on set as well was really scary for me because I've only done little things. And then to get Malibu Towers, which was quite a big thing, it was really shocking. And I think portraying as Sally Hope, because Sally has quite an opposite personality to me. She's really shy. She's quite laid back. So I think it was really fun because it really tested my acting skills. I totally agree with you because when we were kind of calling each other, I could tell that you're, you've got a very big and bubbly personality. And then when you look on, obviously, the show, it's like Sally only speaks when she feels it's extremely exactly. necessary. So... Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's always, <laughs> I think it's always great to kind of also challenge your acting skills. So I can definitely see how Mallory Towers definitely gave me the opportunity to kind of work harder. Yeah, sorry for that. I'm just gonna quickly turn it off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm good now. So yeah. The next question I have for you is: Out of all the Mallory Towers girls or characters, who do you think resonate with the most, and why? To be honest, I think I resonate with all of them because, as I said, they all have different personalities. So it's kind of hard to, you know, just with one of them because they're all very different. So I kind of adapt to all of their personalities in a way. If you get what I mean. Yeah, I just love all of them. To be honest, they're really sweet girls. <laughs> I totally agree with you. I think the best thing about the show, I feel like on any other TV show you kind of look on, there's always one specific character that you relate to. Yeah. And then with Mallory Towers, it's like every single personality trait, you can exactly. kind of get and see that in yourself. I think that's one yeah. of the best things about the characters, especially. Yeah. I kind of relate to Sally um, slightly because even though I'm very outspoken and I, like, I'll kind of speak whenever I have the opportunity to, Mm -hmm. at the same time it's like using your voice to actually better other people so i definitely kind of see myself in all of the girls not um just sally as well yeah um, the next question i have for you is which was the hardest scene to film whether it be maybe laughing or whether it be trying to get those tears running what was the hardest film to see what was the hardest film scene to film <laughs> <maybe>? <laughs> i think i think the hardest scene you would think i'd say my ill scenes but actually, I know this sounds crazy, but <laughs> the hardest scenes were to film were with Ella because me and Ella are really good friends and she is so, like, I can't take her seriously. When we were filming together, it was so hard to take Ella seriously. Like, we dread our scenes because I don't know if anyone has noticed, but our scenes are very, we either hug in, we're crying or we're screaming at each other. So it's very, like, literally, <laughs> we're either happy or we're angry at each other so it's so hard to do scenes with Ella because we just start laughing and they're like and cut okay guys can you stop laughing and we're like sorry I'm sorry <laughs> it's so hard yeah but I think those were the, definitely the hardest scenes to kind of stay in character yeah and I know like even if I'm like at school <laughs> and I need to be like focusing on what the teacher is mm -hmm. saying and then one of my friends next to me just kind of does something it's not necessarily funny but like for me I laugh at anything yeah like, same any chance I get I laugh at anything so staying in character I could probably I can envision you guys to trying yeah. to put on a straight face to kind of obviously yeah. fit into your roles <laughs> yeah definitely and the next question I have for you is, um, how did you discover you had a passion for dance um, kind of before you discovered your passion for acting? Well, as I said previously, like, obviously the ballet classes and the performing arts. But I think when I, think when I joined my actual dance school, like Twin Dance, um, 
they we did competitions and stuff and like we used to do a lot of shows and it definitely made me realize like at first it was kind of trial and error you know because we were trying a lot of different dance schools and we was like no this is not the one no I don't like this one and when I joined twin it was like I fit in this is this is my world like I fit in like do you know what I mean and like when we was just learning the dances you could really that I remember they used to film like us a lot like there's a lot of footage and you could see I used to be so excited to learn the dances and stuff and I used to be so excited on a Saturday like just to go to the dance school and just be a part of it all so that's how I knew like yeah I want to be a dancer. You knew for sure you had that gut feeling. Yeah. yeah. For everybody who obviously is probably in lockdown and just thinking about what do I want to do in the future if you know that you're always going to be excited and that you probably do anything to kind of achieve something that's how you know what your passion is what your purpose yeah. is you can say so the minute you start being determined towards something that's really how you know when you have that gut feeling and that gut instinct that this yeah. is something that you want yeah. to do so thank you yeah. for sharing that because i think a lot of people are probably going to get something from that and yeah. understand um obviously how you obviously started to understand what you love to do and yeah. it's something that you should improve on, you can say. Um, the next question I have for you is, what message would you like to share by performing as a dancer? So I think I have I have three points. So the first one, as I said, as I said at the beginning, patience is so key, especially even with acting, because even with acting, like, you know, you do audition, but with dancing, you don't get it. You don't get it straight away. Unless you was, like, training from the age of birth, you don't get to shit away. So it's a thing of, you need to have a lot of patience and you don't always have to be a trained dancer. I need to remember that you might go through the business of dancing and you might think, oh, these people are better than me. Like when you walk into your dance school, like they might just do the splits or something. You're like, I can't do that. But it doesn't, you just need to not give up. Like you need to just keep on trying until you, you feel like comfortable and when you feel comfortable then try different stuff and have a variety of dances and then just kind of be bigger and better you know what I mean I totally agree with you yeah. any industry people go into and um, I always say this there's always going to be someone who's looking for competition or yeah who's looking to be more elite or more superior than you and the best thing for us to kind of all be equals, you can say, or to all just kind of accept each other's talents, yeah, is to just kind of get rid of that idea of being higher than someone. Because at the yeah. end of the day, we are all the same. We are all equals. Yeah. And it's just unfortunate some people obviously don't see that. And some people just kind of want to be at the top and they'll do anything to do that, even if it means kind of making somebody else upset about it. So. Yeah, I agree with you. Any industry you go into, there's always going to be competition. But the best thing to do is to just kind of dodge it, in a way. Just kind of ignore it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just put it to the side. Yeah. Um, I thought this question would be quite um, important to ask you. Um, kind of keeping in mind everything that's going on, especially regarding the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on it, um, obviously, as a mixed-race girl? What is your opinion on it? What was your views... And how can we speak up um, in this time? Yeah, well, obviously, it's very obvious that this is not right. It's wrong. And I just think everyone needs to kind of use their voice, you know, especially Sally. She's quiet, but Sally would use her voice. You know, you need to use your voice in this time and matter because if you're just sitting at home looking at everyone like Blackout Tuesday and you're just looking at everyone hashtag, then that's kind of wrong. Like... There's, because we're kids, this is our generation, and I think, especially because I'm mixed race, I'm not black and I'm not white, I'm, I'm mixed race, right? And I think every single race has a part that they need to do. And it's a thing of, like, you know, we can't really do much because we're just 14 and 13, but, like, going to protest, making sure that you're standing up for what's right, you know, I think that's, that's the main key thing here because we're not adults and we can't, physically do anything but we can verbally do stuff and make sure that because when we're older we want to tell our grandkids oh yeah racism was about but it's not about anymore and that's what we need to do mm. yeah I think so many kids can relate to you when you say that and are gonna get yeah. something so important from that because honestly people's science or what they've been saying shows which side they are on exactly because, and like i think somebody posted um 12 million people had signed a petition for justice for George Floyd, right? I was one of the people who signed it. And then you look on the Blackout Tuesday, I think 26 million people posted it. 
people think it's some kind of trend and it's trend. not true. these are people's trend. actual lives that have been exactly. taken because of the color of their skin so i think people need to put it into perspective like read the room kind of like understand what's actually going on so thank you for sharing that and what do you think young people can obviously do like from their homes um to support this movement i think first and foremost educate yourself like 100% educate yourself because you don't want to talk about a matter that you don't know about mm. like obviously being mixed race my mom is black so I did grow up with my mom and like you need to just know you need to educate yourself before you do anything mm. second of all sign petitions anything you can do anything you see that price matter sign it do it like it's really making a difference it's really it really is every little bit counts and like Obviously, I think that the best way of, to go about it is like in the hashtags as well, because obviously, as I said, we're just kids and we can't really do that much, like leave the house. If you can go to the protest, maybe take a guardian or a parent with you, go to the protest and protest to what you think is right, you know. But I think definitely make sure, like use your platforms as an advantage. So, you know, if you have TikTok, you have Twitter, you have Facebook, use whatever you can do to support because all the help is needed. A hundred percent. Like, I can see people, I think it was like some kind of controversy I saw on Twitter or like on TikTok and it was um, Kylie Jenner and she was posting a part of this Instagram chain, like yeah. to creators to come and support the Black Lives Matter movement. And then somebody called her out saying, why aren't you using your big platform to support it? And she was like, I did. I posted this chain and she started posting more about it later. But I think some people are slightly blind towards how many people follow everything they do like if kim kardashian gets a hairstyle everyone will start doing that hairstyle so if she uses her voice or she posts something about george floyd or any of the victims or brianna taylor or whoever it is then everybody else is going to start doing that people need to start understanding that it's literally like a reaction it's a chain yeah so everybody will start following what you're doing so people need to start realizing the power of their voice the power of their platform it's, it's extremely, extremely important. It really is. And I think, I think um, the best thing is, I just think, you know, like the chains, if you're just reposting the chains and that's it, then that's kind of not acceptable. I mean, mm -hmm. I understand, you know, but as, as you said, Nessa, it's not a trend. It really isn't. This is people's lives at matter at the moment. And, you know, like right now, racism is still going on. Do you know what I mean? But that's why I'm saying we have to do as much as we can to stop it. Because mostly it is in America, but it is here too. And you're literally living in racism too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the best thing to do is like not just repost because others are reposting. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't just follow other people that's why i said educate yourself before you do it yeah well you just spoke the truth just right there just absolute Spoken. facts just absolute <laughs> facts freaking yeah. and i'm all here for it um mm. but what is your opinion on people who talk about um all lives matter what is your opinion on that what is your um response to people who say that i think <laughs> i think to be honest all lives do matter but they don't matter until black lives matter mm. and it's, we're not saying white people don't matter we're not saying mixed race people matter but we're just saying black lives matter before all lives matter so all lives does matter because you know we are humans they do matter but black lives do matter before you know because we need to make a a bigger deal of it because if someone was racist to a white person it wouldn't be made as such a big deal we need to make this bigger than it really is do you know what i mean we need to make it bigger make it known yeah i think that's what we need to do i agree with you i think especially in the uk yeah people keep comparing the racism or discrimination that's happening here um mm. compared to what's happening in the us and it's like does that make it any better no does that make those yeah. people who have died come back to life no yeah. it, doesn't. it doesn't so i think people who always say all lives matter we're not saying that all lives don't matter we're not. But I'm going to use one of the examples that I've seen like online somewhere. If somebody's house is on fire and if that is represented or symbolised as Black Lives Matter and then your house is absolutely fine 
and you'll say, well, all houses matter, so why do we need to help this house? Well, this house is currently on fire. This house is who needs <laughs> help. If your house is absolutely fine, we're not saying that your house doesn't matter, but right now, this house matters the most because it's in danger. Example, people yeah. need to start understanding that because I feel like if people say all lives matter, you're just being, you're becoming part of the problem. Yeah. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. People are becoming yeah. part of the problem by saying all lives matter and that, yeah, just all lives matter. And it's like, well, yes, they do. Nobody said they don't. So mm. people need to start realizing that because when you start saying that, it just doesn't sound correct. It doesn't come across in the, in the right way. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah um the final question i have for you before we get into the question that from the viewers is um as what you do must require a lot of confidence what would be your top three confidence tips okay so i think the first one as i've said previously from the questions like the first one is definitely when you walk into for dancing and acting especially acting when you walk into the room and i know i definitely have felt this when i walk into an agency or audition room and i see these girls and i know that like i don't have the acting experience that they do they've probably been doing acting all day every day and i don't do that because i do dancing as well and you walk in there and you think i'm not going to get this part that's what i actually thought with Malibu towers i thought i'm not going to get this part because there were so many better people but you need to remember that you're, you're even. They can have so much experience, but you got the role. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And you need to think, you need to kind of, in your mindset, like my family, right? My dad my dad used to be an actor and like a dancer or whatever. And my dad always used to tell me, you're just as good as them. So don't walk into the room thinking, oh, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flop this because you're not. And that's the type of confidence you need to have. Don't be too confident when you think, yeah, I'm going to get the role. I'm gonna, mm. cause and no one likes that. But if you think like, okay, I'm at the same level as them. I'm not scared. If you think like that, then that is a great mindset. And I think the second one is be proud. Be proud of yourself. Like even just for being in an agency, just for going to the audition, be proud of yourself. And third of all, don't let yourself down. Like don't give up. And that, that's a big one, like, do not give up. Because when you do give up, you'll be mad at yourself later on. You will regret it and you'll think, oh, I could have I done that better. I could have done this and done that, but you didn't. Like, do not give up. Always think that you can do it because you can. Mm, I totally agree with you. Because the minute you feel like giving up, you never know what's behind the corner. Exactly. You never know that when you decide to take your name off the um, agency books, so like that person yeah. or that casting company could be calling yeah. you back saying you didn't get that role but we can see you having a role for this yeah so people need to understand you never know what's coming up in the future but you also need to carry on going to see what's going to happen so exactly. thank you for those tips especially yeah. and being co confident is really important i say that across all my platforms all the time 24 7 yeah and if you're too confident then that's really going to show you can't be too cocky but you also can't be too low on yourself you need to be just in in the right amount yeah 100 percent. right in the middle yeah and i think i have one story do you mind if i just of course, yeah go ahead <laughs> go ahead i have this one story for my retail this is actually for my retail and this is a true story i when i was going to audition for my retail it's right so they they gave us, um, so they was like, oh, okay, you want to audition for Family Towers? I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> it was a big thing for me because lines is so hard for me. Lines is very, very, I, I struggle a lot with lines because, you know, Sally, when she, she does want to finally talk, she has like seven paragraphs and she says like, a monologue. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She talks so much. And for me, I was like, like I was so, I remember when I was in Canada, I was so used to like, because Ella has quite a lot of lines, Sen has quite a lot of lines, we've got big paragraphs. So I was like, oh, okay, like, you know, just Sally says hi, Sally says bye, this is okay. And then all of a sudden she has these big paragraphs. I remember when I was doing just a self tape for the agency, right? I was going to give up. I remember if it wasn't for my mom, I was going to give up because they sent us like three pages. Yeah, like three pages of lines to remember. And I was like, uh, I can't do it. I was like, no. I was like, I can't do this. Like, and my mom, if it wasn't for my mom saying, Sienna, do it. And I was like, no. And she was like, yes. <laughs> so then obviously I did it. And look where it got me. Like, 
that is why I say never give up because that story, if it wasn't for my mum, if it wasn't for like my mum's confidence in me, she knew like I had something, you know? And like obviously going to the audition process, I did see um, Daniel at the audition process and you like seeing people do it as well. It was nerve wracking, but you can still do it. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. mean, that is so powerful. Just that story in itself. It's kind of like, well, imagine if we never kind of found our passions. Where would we be now on this very day in the mm -hmm. year of 2020, or the decade of 2020? Where would we have been if all those years ago, when we were yeah. so much younger and we never actually followed our dreams? Where would we have been? So just in that, you telling that story, I think is extremely powerful. I mean, for me, when I'm doing self tapes, mm -hmm. sometimes I can get like 10 pages. I need to learn them in like two days. And I'm just here like, what is going on? I need to remember how to say this and how to say that. And then I have to do schoolwork and things like that. Yeah. Um, it's a lot. Honestly, if you keep on going, you never know where the opportunity or where that struggle is yeah. going to take Because that struggle could turn into the best victory that you've ever like received. So I totally agree with you, Matt. One, thank you so much for sharing that as well. You're like, do I share? I'm like, go ahead. So go ahead. Like you just did. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to answer some questions from those who are watching. Um, okay. So the first question is from underscore grace underscore dot xx. And they said, what dance styles do you like? Thank you for the question. Um, I think, so the dances, the dance styles I actually do is contemporary. I do acrobatics and I do street. Um, but I think... I do like street and contemporary. Those are my favourite. Like, and contemporary is really fun. It's just because they're very different. So I think it's definitely my favourite. Very dynamic. They're almost <laughs> very opposite. <laughs> they like them. Um, the next question is from Amy Charles um, YT underscore. And they said, how old are you, Sienna? Hi, I am 14 years old. 14 years old. <laughs> Um, the next question is from underscore X Y A S ten, and they said, "What do you see yourself doing in the future?" A very good question to ask. Yeah. Hi, Yasmin. Um, I think, to be honest, I actually don't know because I want to be. Before, when I was younger, I had an obsession with being a vet. Everyone that knows me, I wanted to be a vet. Like I loved animals, and now I'm like. Yeah, I don't want to be a vet. I don't want to. No, because yeah, like I don't know. I think I just kind of see where life takes me. I know it sounds really bad, but I kind of see where life takes me because you know I don't know how big Mary Towers could get, and I help like if I could get more jobs from that. And then because I actually do want to be a dance teacher, I want to have my own business, like my agents, like my dance teachers, like I want to be like them. But if that doesn't take off, then acting definitely. I mean, whenever somebody asks me, like, where do you see yourself in five years? And I'm like, I really don't know. Like, yeah. I know what job I would want to do, but I don't know if that would actually work out. Like, I sure hope 100% that it does. But I totally yeah. agree with you. Just kind of see where life takes you. Do that life yeah. road the flow kind of thing. So yeah. I agree with you. <laughs> um, the next question is from Lucy underscore Netherton. And she said, do you think rioting is the right way to spread awareness for Black Lives Matter? No. I believe, I understand. It's understandable because I understand, like, they're angry and, the, oh gosh, they're angry and the police are not listening and they're really not. And I, I can get, I really get that. You're angry. There's an anger. You want to fight back. But physically, it's not always the way because being angry and causing fire, and this is true, Causing fire to the police, causing havoc to police is not doing anything because more people are going to get afraid to go to the protests and, you know, like protest in general. Like they will be more afraid because they would think it's aggressive. And we don't want to put that image. Like black people have a, a reputation, some people say, as aggressive. Yeah. Right? You don't want that. You don't want to look like that. So stop rioting because if you do do that, then... It, there will be more police, there will be more fights, people will be too scared to, you know, riot, riot, too scared to protest, and it won't be peaceful. Like, in London, it is peaceful. Like, mm. I think it's peaceful. In America, it's When I went to them, it was very peaceful. 
we were there at the same time. We can't really each other. <laughs> but yeah, it was so. It was actually beautiful. Like I nearly cried. It was so beautiful, and the news are trying to make it seem like it was aggressive. But I really think writing is not the way. And I find it really disrespectful to anyone that does it because you're being selfish. Like I understand you're angry. I get that. But use that in a different way. Really use that in a different way because it's so disrespectful. Yeah, you said that in like the most perfect way. Thank you. <laughs> Um, the next question is, um, hmm. the next question is for another question from your friend Yasmin, and she said, what three things um, you missed whilst filming Mallory Towers? 100% the cast, like the girls, and I miss every single one of them, but you know, we do text every single day, so don't miss them that much. <laughs> um, I actually miss the crew as well, like my directors, I miss the set as well, and I actually miss going to Canada because, like, after I, I know this sounds a bit crazy, but <laughs> I know this sounds a bit crazy. <laughs> you know, like, um, like you know, after set we would run, go home, eat dinner, go to bed. You know, in the morning, like it, it was like a routine. Do you know what I mean? Like right now, I wake up, um, do some work, you know, maybe stretch, go to sleep. Like there's no routine. I definitely miss. Like, just having every, it was like a family, I can't explain it, like, just everyone there with us, like, the love, you know, going out in Canada, in the weekends we used to go on, like, little trips to, Can like, Toronto, and we used to go to the aquarium to eat food with everyone, it was so sweet. I think, yeah, those are the most things I missed. Oh, I mean, I've never been to Canada before, but probably going there to film something would have been super interesting, so yeah. I'll just go into any place around the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next question is from Holly Dot Rachel, and she says, "I really want to become an actress. What are your top tips?" Okay, so I think if you're definitely a beginner and you had no experience, try and get into a performing arts school. So maybe try and get into um, what do they, is it? What do they call it? A stage school, or like yeah, try and get into a stage school, and you know maybe check it out a little bit, see where you go with it, because they do a lot of they do all three like acting singing dancing because you never know when you go there you might want to be a dancer or a singer um i think try and get into an agency a hundred percent anyone that wants to be an actress try and get into an agency because obviously they can get you jobs and you can actually like, if you're actually serious about it you can actually try and get jobs so definitely get an agency and obviously have confidence and yeah a very important thing have the agency passion and have the confidence to do all those things yeah <laughs> Um, the next question is um, from Erin Dancer 6 and she said, did anything surprise you whilst filming Mallory Towers? Yeah, actually, it did. <laughs> you know when, um, like in Harry Potter, how it looks mehusive? Then I went, <laughs> it looks so big. When I went to um, Mallory Towers, like, you know, the, the um, it looks massive, but it... Like, it is big, like, we, the outside scenes, as I said, we filmed in Cornwall. So, you know, the house, you see the massive, like, house that we stayed in. Here's a little trick. <laughs> when we stayed in the beds, like, you know, like, um, the dorm room, the sand, where I was ill, the sand, um, the hallways, that was all in Canada. And then in Cornwall, it was the big house and the outside scenes. So you would think when you're going to film this is all together, but it's actually not. Yeah. So I think that was what surprised me the most. And also my birthday was, my birthday was. Oh, that is super so cool. <laughs> yeah. And Daniel's birthday was there too. So when we went to, um, when we went, when I went there, my chaperone was so sweet. And I was just sitting down with my friends and we was all just chilling outside. Like we were just waiting for like five minutes to film again. And I was like, what's going on? And all of a sudden, the whole crew came with a cake and they sang happy birthday to me. And I was like, oh. so cute. It was so cute. That was like, so sweet. sweet. Yeah. That was probably the most thing that surprised me. Yeah, you had a little birth a, a birthday um, on set. That is super yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next question is... Ooh, is... Um, um, by Jada Dot Lay, and uh, they said, um, "Who do you dance for?" Hi, Jada. Um, I think, I think the person I dance for is Twin Dance Agency, Twin Dance Company. 
my brain is not there. Twin Arts Company, <laughs> I went to the Twin Arts Company in Bromley. Um, the next question is from X underscore E V X Grace underscore. Um, and she said, How um, has your life been affected by what's happening right now? Um, are you talking about um, Black Lives Matter or the. You could probably say a bit of both, you can say. Okay. So I think. Um, I think with uh, quarantine, obviously everything's been put on pause. So, and that's kind of the problem because, you know, with um, my dance school, like we had last year, I think 2020 has just been a whole mistake. It really has ruined. Just restart it, please. Restart. Yeah, can we restart that? Please? Like, we have to wait till 2021. Um, but I think the problem with me is, first of all, I am really bored of quarantine. I'm so bored. I'm, like, I just, I just want to leave and I want to see my friends and family. And, you know, I just think everything's been put on pause and that's kind of an issue for a lot of people, right? You know, and um, with the Black Lives Matter, personally, it hasn't affected me like, you know, but um, my family, obviously, we're all together and, at this point and we're trying to support as much as we can. But yeah, definitely for quarantine, everything has been put on pause because we had big things coming with our start school this year, you know, a lot of competitions and it would have been really fun. And now it's all on pause and it's really frustrating. Mm. Same here, because me doing speaking, like my yeah. main or sole career is going to events and speaking at them exactly. in front of an audience. Yeah. So when my school closed and went on lockdown, I was like, hmm, so all these events I had planned or I was um, going to speak at, they're all going to be postponed or cancelled. So yeah. everything really has been put on pause. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next question is um, from XOX xox.lucy.xx and she said what was it like acting um ill in the scene in the sand uh, that was a tongue twister <laughs> it really is um thank you for your question this is gonna be an interesting one okay so i've never acted ill before because you know i have really good luck i never really get ill like i don't really get ill. To try it yeah yeah, exactly. Right? And this is even more of a crazy story, but I'm just going to say this. So, first of all, acting ill for me was really fun. I know that sounds crazy, but it was really, really, really fun. Like, obviously, they put, um, I, I usually we have, like, you know, subtle makeup. Like, you wouldn't notice it, you know? Like, just to, like, make your skin look crazy clear. And then, all of a sudden, I had this zombie makeup, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> I used to have zombie, like crazy and obviously sadly you started to get ill over the time so you slowly put more makeup on and like, it was really fun like i had to like scream a lot like you know like that I had to do a lot of crazy facial expressions and it was really dramatic as well i felt like i was in a telenovela like it was <laughs> it was really dramatic <laughs> it was really dramatic for me and I, i'm i'm very dramatic so i think it was really fun and what is so crazy about the ill scenes is my mum when I came back, from, when I came back from Canada, my mum got appendicitis. Oh. I know this sounds like like I'm really happy about it, but <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just saying that's crazy because like I was acting with my mum, like I was acting, and then I was like, oh my god, this is actually what it's like, like wow, like I know this is a really serious matter, but I just it's just crazy that it happened. Um, but yeah. You can put her two and two together and be like, wow, maybe I was being that realistic to kind yeah. of see um, yeah. what, what was actually kind of acting, what was actually really happening. But I hope your mum is okay now, by the way. <laughs> um, the next question is um, from Jada.Lay again. Um, and she said, has quarantine limited you from casting? Um... No, not really. Well, I think, I don't think, for me, I don't know if I'm allowed to do a lot of castings because of Mary Towers. I'm not sure if I am or not, but um, self-tapes have come for me, you know, self-tapes here and there. Um, obviously, I can't go out and, you know, go to the audition, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of self-tapes. And if I did get, like, another role, if I did get another role, I think it would be FaceTime, like, you know, FaceTime with the directors or whatever. Yeah. But no, it hasn't really limited me that much. Mm. Or like Zoom calls. Yeah, Zoom calls. Yeah. 
Otherwise, it's slightly annoying because if like somebody gets a role, they'll be filming it like next year just to make sure that the flights and everything is kind of um, spot on. So, is my point. Um, the final question is um, from um, Charisma Seven, and she said, "What inspires you to keep on dancing?" Hi, Auntie. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Um, what inspires me to keep on dancing? Yes. First of all, it's the fact that, like, I know this is really weird, but I really like, as I think you've noticed, I like family. Like, when Mallory Towers, it's like a family feeling. Mm -hmm. And in dancing, if you met, like, how nice everyone is in our dance school, like, they're so beautiful and so sweet. And I just think that, like, going to see them like every you know think going to see them every rehearsal is really really fun for me especially when we have like extra long rehearsals and they're like five hours i find that really 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 fun because it's just with everyone and like it's just nice to kind of have that environment like if you're having a bad time at home or you're having a bad time at school and then you just go to dance like it just makes your day so much better and i think um going to competitions like having the motivation and everything like you know wanting to win it's just really fun in general. I think that's what wants like me to keep on dancing. And it just feels nice when you dance. Like, you know when you do a good exercise in the morning, you're like, I feel great. I feel great. <laughs> like, when I dance, I just, I generally feel great. Mm, it's a way of kind of releasing all that stress that's kind of yeah. gone on. Like, yeah. Kind of, like, do the dancing at the end of the day. Just kind of helps you release and makes you feel much better. So that is um, beautiful that you just said that, just to kind of help you keep going. Um, mm. One final question. It's actually a very good question. It's from Erin Dancer 06. Um, advice for self tapes. Okay. This one is going to be a little bit tricky for me because I'm not that great at self tapes. <clears throat> okay. So I think advice for self tapes lines, 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 important. Remember your lines. Because that was my mistake when I went to Mallory Towers. Remember your lines. You need to remember them like off my heart. We don't have to, like no pressure. But I'm saying lines are very important when you're doing your self tapes. Like it gets you. And because once you know your lines, you don't have that feeling of like you're forming. And you know when your mom's like, and action. And you're like, don't know what to say. Like, so like you know when they your mum filmed and it, to know your lines then you can kind of play with it you know try different emotions try different ways with it and I think also your background is very important so make sure and um, they like it when it's I think it's either this way or that landscape. way landscape yeah, it's horizontal yeah yeah, so make sure it's landscape and make sure you're wearing something kind of plain, like not too like Nike, 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 Adidas, 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 or like jumbo colours. Like you see, this is quite plain. Like this would be a good thing for a self tape. Maybe not the necklace, but you know. And then um, make sure you look fresh as well. Like your hair's done, like everything's neat. Like you don't look too messy, unless that's for the role. And obviously your background, try and have a white background and make sure the lighting is natural or like, like I don't know if you can see. It's bright though, yeah. Yeah, like have a LED. Light. I've got one as well. <laughs> have a LED light or something, you know, to make sure that it's shining nice on your face. Mm. Especially you talking about the lines, because if people mm -hmm. are doing like even like theatre shows or the, as a, like as yeah. the same thing, self tapes. Because if you don't remember your lines, you're just going to think about how to say them and what to say. Mm. And then you're not going to think about how to actually perform acting. them exactly. in the way of how the character would be acting. So I think people kind of end up sounding really like robotic or scripted because they're literally like, and then this one, and then that line, and then this one. Yeah, so I definitely agree with you. Natural lighting is always the best. Or get yourself ring light because they work miracles. They really, they really do. do. <laughs> and they have like moods. So like you can do bright, you can do dark. This is like natural. That This would be good mm. for it. It, you know like and that's what really good about ring lights and they're not too expensive either mm. you can always get them for like really decent prices yeah as we were saying there's like a blue one there's like an orangey warmer one and then it's just yes. like a mix yeah, of yeah. yeah yeah <laughs> everybody who has ring lights can probably um understand where we're coming from with that mm. one um but yeah thank you for that advice as well hopefully it does help you um erin but that is or well, that was the final question um Sienna, thank you so much for coming onto this live and obviously sharing your inspiration to everyone. It was super powerful. 
you obviously killed it like I thought you would. Um, is there any um, other last inspirational words to tell the people who are watching? Um, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you to all my followers. Thank you to everyone um, just supporting me the whole way. Thank you to everyone making efforts. Thank you to everyone being sweet. Um, I just think, just I just want to say, as I said, never give up. Also, I hope everyone is doing great in quarantine and just make sure to keep active, make sure to keep healthy. And this would be a great time if you do want to be a dancer, because you know when you're busy, you know, at, her, at um, school, there's a lot of things going on in everyone's life. This is a great time. Don't be lazy, because I was at the beginning. Don't be lazy, okay? If you want to try something new, try something new. If you want to be a dancer, start stretching, start looking at YouTube videos, you know? Really try, if you want to be a singer, sing every day till your lungs hurt. Like, <laughs> really, if you want a new passion, this is a great time. Like, use it as an advantage right now, because you're never going to get the crap again. I believe, I think it was God trying to say, okay, I'm going to give everyone a break from life, okay? You're going to chill at home, and you're going to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. We all we need a break from what's going on right now to focus on what's actually in front of us and what we need to yeah. follow and what yeah. we need to do to actually pursue our goals. So True. I think in a way, 2020 does not seem um, the best or it or it may not have like come out the correct way or yeah. what we have expected it to be like. Mm. But I think I saw a post, I don't remember exactly what it said, but it's like 2020, we are in lockdown and we have had all this time to focus on ourselves. Because this is the only way us as human beings, as the world, as the globe, the people and the population to actually be pushed towards what to do. Because if something's going to swiftly said to us, we're not going to do it. But if we're actually in that position and we've got no other choice to actually follow our hearts, I think that's really what 2020 has done for all of us. So... I exactly. definitely agree with you on that one. Yeah. Um, if anybody um, hasn't watched Mallory Towers or um, would like to start watching it, where can they watch it? Um, you can watch it on BBC iPlayer to catch up. If you just want to binge everything, go watch on BBC iPlayer. Every Monday on CBBC at 6.30. I don't think that's right. I think it's at 5.30. I have one of those times. Um, I think it's 5.30. It's every one of on my page so after this go follow go go like the post go like vanessa's post um after thank this you. and time is also vanessa i'd like to say congratulations on your show thank you so much thank so, you <laughs> thank yeah. you um if anybody doesn't already follow sienna um on instagram go and follow her right now i don't know what you're doing but we're in quarantine you've got no other excuse and also follow her on TikTok because your content is amazing. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave my TikTok here, but it's Sienna. Oh, yeah, I don't know my TikTok. I think it's Sienna underscore, no, Sienna Arif Knight. Just type in my whole name or Sienna underscore AK. So I'm just going to leave that here. Um, and go follow my TikTok and like the post, guys. And like yeah, this post as well. She's got some great content. There we go. So everybody yeah. go and follow Sienna on her social media platforms. If you're not already watching Mallory Towers, go and follow Mallory Towers um, on their Instagram. And also start watching the show so you can actually start to learn more about the characters and a bit more about what this interview was about. Um, but again, thank you so much, Sienna, for sharing your inspiration, your journey to all of us. It was so amazing and fantastic. And... Um, Everyone's saying, please save. Um, I always do save my Instagram live. So this will be up on my IGTV if you um, are logging in now and you'd like to rewatch it from the beginning. Um, you'll be able to rewatch it. Do not worry. I wouldn't put this live to waste. I would not delete it. I would never do that. But again, thank you so much, Sienna. And I will speak to you soon. Thank you, Vanessa. Right. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.